Welcome back. In this YouTube video, I'm looking at 4.2 resultant moments. 4.2 represents Chapter 4, Section 2 of the Pearson A Level Mass Applied Mass Year 2 textbook. Let's go through the key facts of this section. Firstly, the moment of a force measures the turning effect of the force on a rigid body. The moment of a force is given by force multiplied by the perpendicular distance. The unit that we use for the moment of a force is Newton meter. Consider the following right angle triangle. Here is the right angle, here is the angle theta. Suppose the hypotenuse is D. Now this side over here with the right angle and the angle theta is considered to be the adjacent. The adjacent is given by D cos theta. This side over here is considered to be the opposite. The opposite is given by D sin theta. Now we have an additional fact. What does it mean by resultant moment? Ladies and gents, resultant moment is just the sum of the individual moments. These are the key facts of 4.2 resultant moments. I'll be implementing these key facts within examples and an exam style question. Let's have a look at example one. The diagram shows a set of forces acting on a light rod. Calculate the resultant moment about the point P. Okay, so over here we have three forces. One, two, three. We must calculate the moment of each of these individual forces. So let's start off with the five Newton force. The moment of five Newton force about P is equal to the force itself, which is five Newtons, multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point P to the force. So that is three meter. So five times three, this gives me 15 Newton meter. Now, if I hold the point P and I apply this force five Newtons, this will take the entire body clockwise. So we have 50 Newton meter going clockwise. Moving on to the four Newton force. The moment of four Newton force about P is equal the force itself, which is four Newtons, multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point P to the force, which is one. So four times one is four Newton meter. Now, if I hold on to the point P and I apply this four Newton force, it's going to take the entire body anti-clockwise. So we have four Newton meter going anti-clockwise. The final force, the three Newton force. So we have the moment of three Newton force about P is equal the force itself, which is three Newtons, multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point P to the force, which is one. So three times one is three Newton meter. If I hold on to the point P and I apply this force three Newtons, it's going to take the entire body anti-clockwise. So we have three Newton meter going anti-clockwise. Now we must calculate the total clockwise moment and the total anti-clockwise moment. So total clockwise moment is equal to 15 Newton meter. Total anti clockwise moment is equal to four plus three. So that is seven Newton meter. Now the greater moment is the clockwise moment. So we're going to take clockwise to be the positive direction. Now we can go ahead and work out the resultant moment. Therefore, resultant moment is equal 50 minus 7, because the 7 is taking it anti-clock. We've taken clock to be the positive direction. So 15 minus 7, which is equal to 8 Newton meter, taking the body clockwise. That there completes example one. Moving on to example two. The diagram shows a set of forces acting on a light rod. Calculate the resultant moment about the point P. 
Ladies and gents, over here we have one, two, three, four different forces. We must calculate the moment of these individual forces. Let's start off with the free Newton force. The moment of three Newton force about P is equal, the force itself, which is three Newtons, multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point P to the force three Newtons, which is two meter. So we have three times two, which is six Newton meter. If I hold on to the point P and I apply the free Newton force, that's going to take the entire body anti-clockwise. So we have 6 Newton meter going anti-clockwise. Now let's find the moment of 2 Newton force about P. So this is equal to the force itself, which is 2 Newtons, multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point P to the force, which is 1. So 2 times 1 is 2 Newton meter. If I hold on to the point P, this force 2 Newtons will take the entire body clockwise. So we have 2 Newton meter going clockwise. Moving on to the 1 Newton force. The moment of 1 Newton force about P is equal to the force itself, which is 1 Newton multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point P to the force, which is 1. So 1 times 1 is 1 Newton meter. Again, ladies and gents, if I hold on to the point P and I apply this 1 Newton force, it's going to take the entire body clockwise. So we have 1 Newton meter going clockwise. Finally, the moment of the 5 Newton force. The moment of 5 Newton force about P. This is equal to the force itself, which is 5, multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point P to the force, which is 2 meters. So 5 multiplied by 2 is 10 Newton meter. If I hold on to the point P and I apply this force, it will take the entire body anti-clockwise. Now we need to calculate the total clockwise moment and the total anti-clockwise moment. So total clockwise moment will equal, so we've got the 2 Newton meter plus the 1 Newton meter. So that's 3 Newton meter. Okay, total anti clockwise moment this will equal the 6 newton meter plus the 10 newton meter so that's 16 newton meter now the greater moment is the anti clockwise moment the 16 newton meter so we're going to take anti clockwise to be the positive direction. Therefore, resultant moment will equal, so we've got 16 minus 3. So that will be 13 Newton meter, taking the body anti-clockwise. That there, ladies and gents, completes example 2. Let's have a look at an exam style question. The diagram shows a set of forces acting on a light rod. The resultant moment about P is 12.8 Newton meter clockwise. Find the value of X. Ladies and gents, we have one, two, three different forces. So we're going to calculate three different moments. Let's start off with the moment of the six Newton force. So we have the moment of six Newton force about P. This is equal to the force itself, which is 6, multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point P to the force. So that is x plus 3x, which is 4x, plus 2x, 6x. So 6 times 6x is 36x Newton meter. If I hold on to the point P and I apply this force, it will take the entire body clockwise. 
So we have 36 X Newton meter going clockwise. Moving on to the 10 Newton force. The moment of 10 Newton force about P. It is equal to the force itself, which is 10, multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point P to the force, 10 Newtons. So that is X plus 3X, which is 4X. So we get 10 times 4X, which is 40 x if i hold on to the point p and i apply the 10 newton force it's going to take the entire body anti-clockwise so we have 40 x newton meter going anti-clockwise moving on to the final force the 12 newton force the moment of 12 newton force about p is equal to the force itself which is 12 multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point P to the force, which is x. So 12 times x. This gives me 12x. Now, if I hold on to the point P and I apply the 12 Newton force, it's going to take the entire body clockwise. So we have 12x Newton meter going clockwise. Now, the resultant moment is 12.8 Newton meter going clockwise. So clockwise is the positive direction so our resultant moment is going to be 36x plus 12x we're taking clockwise to be the positive direction minus 40x this must equal 12.8 so 36x plus 12x is 48x so 48x minus 40x is equal 12.8. So that there simplifies to 8x. So 8x is equal 12.8. Now we can solve for x. Okay, so ladies and gents, therefore, x is equal 12.8 divided by 8. This gives me 1.6. This completes the exam style question and this teaching video 4.2 resultant moments. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.